There we go, look, traffic officer working his way through on a smart motorway. The lanes have just been closed. We've just had it flash up that junction five to six is closed on the M5. And now all the emergency vehicles are struggling to get through because there's no spare lane on this smart motorway, which is gonna delay everything. So if the, hopefully there is no one injured, but if there is someone injured up ahead and they're waiting for assistance, normally what would happen is an ambulance would fly down the hard shoulder and get to them. But because we're on a smart motorway with no hard shoulder, you've got to wait for everybody to get off their mobile phones, pay attention to what's coming up behind them and let these emergency vehicles through. Absolute nightmare. There is nothing smart about a smart motorway. <laughs> Say that again now, I'm filming. So we, we sat behind, what is it, G, a G car? It would be a G, the sensible one is the G400D. This is like a G750 with stupid alloys. What is it? What's the badge? It's a 22. No, it's a 400, so it is a diesel. It's a G400 diesel. It's a 22 plate. It's ugly. Yeah. It was designed in the 70s. Yeah. And what was that, 90 grand? No, I don't think you'd get one of those for 90 grand. I think you'd have to pay quite a bit more. No. Welcome to a special edition Jeff Buys Cars podcast where uh, Jeff and, uh, brother, I'm gonna call you brother Jeff. Brother Jeff. Like in a, pr oh, like in a priestly sort oh, of way. I like that, in a, brother cult Jeff. a cultish sort of in way. In a cultish sort of way. We did grow up in a cult. Um, you've, you've seen brother Jeff before on other Jeff videos. We've just delivered the Jag to a gentleman who um, hadn't told his wife that he bought the Jag. So asked me to leave it on the road slightly further up from his house so he could pretend that he'd taken it in part exchange and not actually bought it, which was brilliant. And now we're stuck on a not so smart motorway um, desperately trying to get through, well, to get back home really, but because it's a not smart motorway, no one can go anywhere. The, uh, the chap who bought the Jag as well is obviously clearly getting himself prepared for the fuel crisis because he had an S500 on the drive. And he also had an XJS V12. Okay, his, so real eco warrior. Yeah, an XJS V12 and he had an XJ Coupe, which I think were only V12. The old, that's the old XJ6. So absolutely um absolutely on it for the for the fuel crisis so he's, yeah he's cat triple s jack would be the ideal cat cat trip cat s multiple times um what is the best car you've ever owned because you've had almost as many cars as me the porsche cayman probably. cayman yeah we had a, a cayman hang on i need to do the story on it because I've, do, I've been doing these podcasts where I, I tell a story of a car. Remember the E55 AMG? I did that, uh, yeah, I I did that, that the other day. day. Yeah, yeah. So, this is the story of a Porsche. It was a Cayman S, wasn't it? Cayman, Cayman S, and it was a Cat S. Right. Cayman Triple S. Hang on, there's, there's two stories here. Was this involved with the M3 as well? It wasn't, was it? This was just the van. This was the van, yeah. But it does involve Dodgy J from Digbeth, who, yeah, ripped, who yeah. ripped us off. <laughs> so... <laughs> We decided that we were going to make a bit of money, and we probably would have made a bit of money but if we'd done just, this. The worst thing about Dodgy J, it wasn't his dodgy paintwork, it wasn't the fact that he said this would be a grand, and then you'd turn up and he'd say, oh no, it's three grand. It was the fact that I went there once to pick up a car, it wasn't ready, which was standard Dodgy J, and he said, I'll make you a coffee. He gave me a big, big talk about he doesn't like bad coffee, and then he made me a three-in-one instant coffee from a sack, from like a satchel thing. Brilliant. Um, from a sachet. Sachet, from not a, a satchel. From a satchel, from a sachet. Yeah. Um, with like lukewarm water. And he'd given me this big lecture about, oh, don't do bad coffee, only do good coffee. And, you, and your car's ready. I'd have business meetings with him where we talked about all the things we were gonna do, which would basically involve us walking from his unit over to the Irish Centre in Digbeth, where he would chat women up. <laughs> and that would be it. And I'd leave, we'd be a couple of pints in, and I'd think, what are we doing? He, he did tell me he owned a hundred houses. Yeah. <laughs> but also, as well, I'd noticed that whenever nice cars would pull up, they were always his dad's. He's, so I think everything yeah. belonged to his dad. <laughs> his dad had a lovely purple S type, didn't he? And his uh, dad was an absolute grafter. His dad was a grafter, yeah. And I, I don't think, yeah, that they were different people. But they always had some interesting cars. They had like an Escort Cosmoth at the back of the yard, and. There was all sorts going on there. But this is the story of a Porsche Cayman S. Um, so, we decided we're gonna make some money by turning vans into camper vans, which in hindsight would have been a great idea if we'd done it right. I, yeah, pro probably not a good business plan to start in in August. No, but the end, end of the summer. So we find this van, and there's two things that went wrong here. Firstly, it was a Volkswagen T5, 
and the guy had just finished using it as a work van. It was white, and he listed it for sale for something ridiculous. It was it was 96, 96,000 miles, uh, one owner, full history, and I think he listed it for six grand or something like that. Basically, it was too cheap. We, yeah, whatever it was listed for, we probably paid it straight away, though. Yeah, so we got up there the next day, and then he was like, oh, I had so many messages, and we were like, there goes the M5, up the M5, uh, not at 200 mile an hour. So, yeah, I think we put, we paid less than the market value, and what we should have done is just sold it the next day for a profit. But instead, we took it to Dodgy J, who promised us a high quality and cheap paint job, who gave us a poor quality and expensive paint job instead. So he painted the whole van white. He said he could change it into one of the Ford RS colors for a grand. So we were thinking, oh, we just want it tidying up a bit, so it'll be 500 quid. There's an E55 AMG estate there, which is also part of another story. Um, so yeah, we were thinking it was going to be a 500 quid paint job, and then we, we turned up, it had been painted white, which was the colour it already was, and the bill was two grand, wasn't it? It, it was so, it was covered in orange peel It was really peel badly well. done, it was very orange peely, and like all the masking marks down the doors yeah. were just really, really obvious. So then we, had, we were then, by that point, about eight grand into a van that was worth about six grand. Um, to be fair, we did then do some good stuff with it. We cut the windows out, or well, we didn't, we paid someone to do it. Um, I did my patented carpeting job and we put some lights in it and made it a day van. Oh, it was also lowered and it had big wheels on it, but then they broke it when they lowered it as well, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. So the garage that we used who did the lowering uh, cocked up something to do with an ABS sensor, which meant that to fix it, we would have had to remove all the nice carpets that we'd put in. <laughs> it was a disaster, wasn't it? So it ended up owing us about ten grand, and the retail the retail price on it was probably going to be about eight. So we were going to be two grand in the hole. So then we decided the best thing to do with it was it was just before Christmas, wasn't it? We still had it before Christmas. Yeah. Dad had borrowed it to move house. Curb the alloys. Curb the alloys. I'd been involved in a very ridiculous almost crash with it when um, we were in one of these merging turn situations. I was obviously doing what I do as you can probably guess, going down to the cones and merging in, in the way that you're supposed to. And a lorry decided that he was gonna be judge, jury, and executioner, and stopped me from doing that. The problem was I was in a really bad mood, and I was doing about 65 mile an hour. So I very nearly wrote the van off by sliding it into the back of him. And it was the only time ever in my history of driving I got out the van, I blocked him in, I got out the, I got out the van, and I was ready to like do something. I don't know what I would have done. Thankfully, I didn't have any weapons on me at the time normally my vehicles are fairly well stocked with uh, things to use in that situation but I, I was livid and then I even phoned his boss and told <laughs> told, told the boss what he'd done yeah, a proper male yeah, Karen proper, proper, I was a proper Karen on that day I was in such a foul mood um, anyway so then we decided the best thing to do after everybody had tried to borrow the van and nobody really wanted to buy it oh yeah that was yeah because we so we had about 10 grand in this van. Yeah. And everybody just thought they could borrow it, didn't they? Yeah. Getting phone calls from random people to move furniture. And... Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the wheels were not exactly very practical. So then we decided that what we would do is just go on eBay and try and find an interesting car. Dog. Stop grumbling. Try and find an interesting car that we could use to get out of the van and into something else. And I think... We were messaging about all sorts, weren't we? M M3 convertibles yeah. when they were cheaper and, and just a bit of everything. And eventually, I think you found this one. So Jake found a dealer, like a part-time car dealer that was just a bit hard on his luck and he needed some cash. So we said to him, we'll give you a van and some cash. How much did we give him? Only two. Two grand? Yeah. So we gave him the van and £2,000 in cash money for a Cat C Porsche Cayman S. And I think he said to you on any other day, he wouldn't be interested, but he'd had a he, run of no sales or something. He needed a van, and I think he had he had about four cars in his yard that he'd repaired himself. Um, but it's just before Christmas, so he had no money. So yeah, this this two grand in the bank would have been perfect for him, and he needed a van as well. Yeah. Um, and I think he'd had his fun picking up as many girls as possible in this Cayman S. Yeah. So. You ended up using the Cayman S as your personal car for a little while, didn't you? Yeah. How long did you use it for? I, I, I used it for a few months. Three months, yeah. So, and it was a nice car, wasn't it? It was a proper. It was lovely, yeah, lovely. It, you drive a Cayman S, six speed, but what power? About 340 horsepower, they're less yeah. than that. No, 340. 340. So, 340 horsepower, six speed. You drive one of those and you think, why would you need a 911? It felt 
at times as well, it had loads of low-end power, so it felt a little bit like driving a diesel. Um, and lo loads of torque, and it would do like if you if you wanted to drive it sensibly, it'd do 35 to the gallon. Yeah, which, which is fine. But that that was one of those cars where you accelerate onto the motorway down the slipway, and it's just joyous, isn't it? it, it yeah, and it, there was just something about driving a Porsche as well. Yeah, there was. Yeah, it's very because we had it around Christmas. It's very satisfying going to Christmas parties. Having the cheapest car in the car park, but everyone's saying, "Oh, that's a bit nice, isn't it?" Yeah, because it had a private plate under it. It did, yeah, yeah, it did. Pri private plate, cat C. It was very Jeff, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like the most Jeff Porsche <laughs> yeah. you could have. <laughs> it's a bit of an Alan Partridge. Porsche. It was, wasn't it? It was. And then in the end, we sold it, and I think we ended up getting out what we paid for it. But I delivered it. I don't know why. Maybe you were away. A three, a four. <laughs> Away, yeah. I delivered it up north to a chap that wanted to use it for track days, and um, I drove the shit out of it driving it home. <laughs> driving it up to him. I remember, uh, yeah, dad was following me to deliver the car in, in a Mercedes, and it was another one of those days when I was in a very bad mood. And um, I remember accelerating onto the, I think it was the M6 Toll actually. I accelerated onto the M6 Toll, and I won't say publicly the speed that I achieved, but needless to say, when we when we did arrive at the destination, my dad was like, I don't think that was very sensible, son, <laughs> in his typical way. <laughs> so yeah, so that was, uh, that was, that was the Cayman S. Would you have another one? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it, was, a, it was a nice car, it was blue. Um, I'm sure you put some pictures yeah, on. Yeah, I can find some pictures. But the front bumper was a slightly different blue to the rest of the car, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think it had yeah, it had front end damage. The suspension on full lock made a bit of a funny noise. Oh, I didn't realise that. Um, yeah, yeah. If you were trying to do like a low end parking manoeuvre, it made like some weird clunking noises. Right. Um, but it drove perfect. You could any if you could put the back out whenever you wanted to. It was cheeky, um, wasn't it? It was like a cheeky car. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't too much. It, yeah, it didn't it didn't feel outrageous. It felt like something if you if you crashed it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I tell you what was interesting about that though. I felt more comfortable uh, in a general way, in, in like a safety and not losing my driving license way and everything. I felt more comfortable in that 3.4 manual Cayman than I ever did in your 3.2 Audi TT. Oh, that was wild though. There was something about that car that was just insane. Yeah, the, that the, t the TT. You couldn't drive it sensibly. No, you had to drive it flat out everywhere. So there you go. That is um, the story of the Porsche Cayman S. I'm going to stop the video now, do a new video, because now we're going to do the E55 AMG Estate. <laughs> <laughs>